Hi boys and girls, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be painting this sloth bank with you. Okay, um, um, all of you should have picked up your kits at the library, other than those people just watching on YouTube. Uh, but for those of you that have picked up your kits at the library, you should have your piece, your paints, um, your brushes, a couple of brushes, you know, they're if you want better brushes, you have to go get better brushes. But I gave you a couple of brushes in the kit that should suffice. And um, have a, a, you don't need a palette because you have your paints out in the strip, the pods. I have a palette because mine are being poured out of large bottles. You need a paper towel and a water bowl. Okay, so the way I started, now you have directions there. And if you don't want to do it the way I did it, that's fine. But you should have enough colors to play around. What I did is I, I went on line and I looked up pictures of sloths and there were so many different variations of how to paint the piece you can do whatever you would like but I'm going to show you what I did okay now his head is a little different than his body and that's the way it looked to me in one of the pictures that I did so I thought it was a little unique so I started out by putting the gray on his head the dark gray that I gave you on his head and it doesn't have to be perfect I kind of wiggle my brush around where I'm going to be butting the color up against another color. It can overlap a little bit. It's not that big a deal if it goes out of the lines because you're gonna be dry brushing over it, putting other colors over this color that we're putting on right now. So I did his whole head, including his face, in the gray. Okay, so you see how I'm doing it. If I get a little on his arms or you know any other part on the tree, it's okay, it's okay. But I just want to get rid of the white spots. You don't want to have any white spots because when you dry brush or you put another color over this, the, the spots that you leave white will show. So make sure that you do a nice even application. Nice and smooth, not a lot of paint in the brush. Remember to go back and keep smoothing out your color before you dip for more color. And don't scoop up your color. Just put a drop of paint in your brush and spread it out. It goes very far and you need very, very, very little. I, I, I filled up this well, and it, it, there's still tons of paint in there, and I have the whole head painted. So you don't need a lot of paint. I always give you plenty. But go back, look at it from all different directions, turn it upside down, then you see all the white spots you missed when you turned it upside down. Go back on the back and go over it again. And just try to get those white spots covered. Now when you wash your brush, you swish it in the water like so. I never bang my brush in the bottom of the bowl. I swish it and then make sure that you dry it. You don't want to put a dripping wet brush into the next color because your colors will run down the piece. Now I have I have three colors here. So I have the darker brown I put on his body. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put the darker brown on his body. See that? Okay. Well the first thing you should have done to begin with is take that stopper out of the bottom because you, you don't want to paint the stopper. Okay. A little difficult if you have a parent around. Oh, I got mine out. Maybe you're stronger than I am. I have mine out, so take it out because you don't want to paint that. And then paint the brown on his body. That includes his arms. And you have two different size brushes, so you'll be able to use the bigger one to do the bigger areas. And when you want to get close, if you don't want to get too messy, you can go to the smaller pointy brush. I'm using a little bigger brush than you have. I don't want you to have to sit here all day and just watch me base coating. Okay. And I used two different browns to give it a different look. See this dark brown on his body, how much darker his body is than the tree? Because I started the tree out with a little lighter brown. So it makes a difference, the color that you put on first, the effect that you're going to have at the end. A little more work putting three different colors on the piece first, but we're not in any hurry. We're supposed to be enjoying painting. Okay, and I continue to do the body. And you can take your time. If I, you find that I'm going a lot faster than you, just pause the video and come back to it. here and like I said the the most important thing is not to have white spots you want to make sure that with the colors that we're putting on first you have the complete piece covered 
trying to see where his claws are here. But I'm not being that neat. I'm kind of just using the bigger brush and going over them. Because then I'll bring the other brown up to meet it with a smaller brush. Okay, I think I have most of it covered. A little bit more in the back here. Oh, I didn't do his arm up there. There's always something you miss, so I have to go back and get a little bit more of the dark brown to do his arm. Then I have just his arm here. Then when I finish that, I'm going to be doing the tree in the little bit lighter brown. Okay, so I have pretty much of that covered. And I could you could take your time and go back and make sure that you don't have white spots. But you get the idea. Okay, swish again, swish my brush in the water. Dry it really well on the paper towel. And now the rest of the piece I'm going to be doing in the little lighter brown that I have here. I don't want to tilt too much. It'll be spilling out all over the place. But you have two different browns. So this is the lighter brown I'm going to be doing on the rest of the piece. So that's the tree and the base. And you can start wherever you'd like and go right over everything. You don't want to have any white showing after you do this brown. See the difference in the two browns? And you should always do the bottom. Make sure you do the bottom, too. I'm not going to take the time to do it, but you can do the bottom also. A piece is not really completed unless the bottom is done. You have to make sure that you pull down and get it into the ridges of the grass. Even if you put a little extra paint in your brush, make sure that you pull it all out until you get rid of that paint before you dip for more paint. Because your paint won't dry. If you put your paint on properly, it dries very fast. Okay, so I have the bottom done. And now I'm going to be holding him by his head. And I'm going to do the tree. And that's this part back here. Now the tree has a lot of grooves, so you have to be a little careful and make sure that you get it into all those little grooves. So I'm going to be using the bigger brush to do most of it, but then I'm going to take the smaller brush and where I have to do the edging, I'm going to go back and work with the smaller brush. Because over here it's a little harder with this big brush that I'm using. A little bit more of the brown. So I do whatever I can with the big brush. And if I think I'm going to make a mess here, I'm going to take the smaller brush and fill in. Okay, so now I'm going to swish this in the water. Your brush, both your brushes that you have are a little bit smaller than mine. So you have a little smaller brush like this that you can get close with the same as I'm doing right now. And now I had the gray was out of the lines and I just put the brown over it and the brown covered it very well. So I went over his claws with the lighter brown by mistake. So what I'll do is when, it, when it's dry, I'll go back with the darker brown and put it over his claws. See over here I did his claws in the lighter brown instead of the darker brown. So that's, I make mistakes too. It wasn't as obvious before, but now it's obvious as I'm going to do the lighter brown, I could see that I shouldn't have done that. I'll just let it dry and you can go right over it again. Don't try to put one color over another color while it's wet. Make sure that it's dry before you layer colors. Otherwise, you're just going to get a third color. They're going to mix together. You're not going to be layering them. 
they're wet. Okay, so I'm going to get in here and touch up all the little spots that I've missed. And the smaller brush does that much better for you. A little more tricky um, when you're base coating with three different colors. I like to usually give you one color to base coat, but I thought he would look better in three different colors. But you can do whatever you'd like. It's your piece. You're the artist. I always say that. You're the artist. You do whatever you'd like on the piece. I'm just giving you a guide. I try to tell you the right way to apply colors and you know, make sure you don't have water in your brush, how to dry brush. Going back and I'm just trying to touch up all these little white spots that I have all over the place, especially in the crevices and those grooves. But down here I'm going back and putting a little bit more down here. And I want white spots. And now I'm going to pick up some of the dark brown again and go over the uh, his claws here that I did by mistake in the light brown. I'm going to do them over in the dark brown. They're dry, so I can go right over it. And I see under here that I needed more of the dark brown also. Try to get rid of my white spots. Okay. I, I mean, mine is not perfect. You should take your time and try to be a little more perfect than I am. But I want to move on and show you the next step. Okay, so his head is dry brushed in white. His face is also dry brushed in white first. And then you have a, a golden color. It's actually called light umber. And we're gonna put a little bit of that over the face, but first we're gonna do the white. Now take the larger of your two brushes and make sure that it's really, really, really dry. Okay. And we're going to pick up a little bit in the brush and we're going to take it out on a paper towel. You don't want a lot of paint in your brush. And we're going to be dry brushing on his, I'm going to do his head first. So now you see what I'm doing? I'm going against the grain. You could do that with your square brush, as long as you don't have a lot in the brush. And I want to try to keep the gray showing in the crevices. Now I can do this whole head with just one application of paint in the brush, one, one loading of the brush, I should say. Um, people try to put too much on and then the dry brushing doesn't come out right. You can see what I'm doing. My, my brown is a little wet, so it's hard for me to hold it. I'm trying to do it so that you can see what I'm doing. Now there's nothing in this brush and yet I'm still getting the white on the face. One brush load did it all one time. Now you have a different brush so it may not always work for you but what I would do is make sure that you no matter what brush you're using you just put a drop in the brush and you work it out of the brush hairs on the paper towel. Your brush should have hardly anything in the brush. It's a dry brushing so you want a very dry brush. You want the paint to be in there but very dry. Okay, and then you just start out with a very light hand, go against the grain. And even though I'm gonna go back and do his nose in brown and stuff later, I still just put it over the whole thing because those colors will go over it. Yeah, so, okay, so um, I'll do that, finish that. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that rust color that we have here, this golden color. I only need a drop, so I'll just work out of the cap. And put. don't wash your brush in between colors. Just pick up the next color and work it into the brush. And then the color that you use next cleans the previous color out of the brush, so I don't wash the brush in between. And then I went back and I just put a little bit of that golden color on his face. Now because I had the white in the brush, I'm not getting 
the true color yet, but if you do it a couple of times, you get rid of the white that's in the brush. And like I said, I was following a picture that I saw on Pinterest or on the internet. I look on Pinterest a lot for some ideas and I'm not really into sloths, so I didn't know what he looked like. Okay, so there we go. And I think he should need a little bit more. You can do as much as you want. Okay, there's no right or wrong with this. Now that, see that spot I just did is a lot darker. I'll take my finger and just blend it. Blend it with my finger. As long as it's wet, it's damp. You can blend it with your finger. Okay, and I gave him like a golden face. Okay, they're never exactly the same. This one guy's a little whiter, so you could put more white on him first too. All right? No two animals are the same. No two people's skin colors are the same. So I think there's no right or wrong in this. So you, and every time I do a sample or I do a piece, it always comes a little bit different each time that you do it. All right, again, I'm not going to be washing the brush. I want to be using, um, I think I'm going to use the regular brown. Let me just see what I did originally. Okay, so I'm going to take the browns that I have here now. I'm going to be dry brushing these browns on the body. So I like the dark color on his body. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, the lighter brown, the lightest brown that I gave you. There were two browns of the lightest brown. And again, I didn't wash my brush. I just put it right in with the golden color. And I'm going to use that to highlight his body. All right, so you see on his body, I do have some white. We'll have to go back and do that later, but I'm doing the browns right now, so I'm going to be trying to put in another shade of brown on his body. And just go against the grain. So if his grain is going up and down, you go the opposite way. Like the little grooves, that's what I'm talking about as being the grain. It's just to give him a little character so the body is just not solid. See that? Okay. I'm going to be doing that over the entire body to give it a little texture. That's the lighter brown that I'm using. Because the darker brown is the base coat. So can you see the difference between what I did and what I didn't do? Okay. So I'm going to go on to this side now. Now the color is a lot browner than it was when I first started because I had that golden color in the brush. So I'll go back over it again. Oh, I can see white spots that I missed. So I wanted to pick up my little brush and touch up some of my white spots here. I'll let that dry before I put the color over it. So again, I'm picking up a little bit more of the, dark, the lighter brown. And going against the grain. Sluts are so popular right now. Seems like every year there's some new animal or promotional type item that becomes very popular. It was it was trucks, the pickup trucks. Gnomes, gnomes I think are still popular, but this year in animals, the sloth, the llama. All right, I don't know if you could see the shading, okay? But that's what you wanna do. And when you do dry brushing, you usually should do it twice because the second time the color pops even more. I wanna show you where I did the second time here. This is done a second time here. I don't know if you could see it on the video. Right here is a second time and over here is only a first time. All right, so each time that you do it, it gets a little sharper, the color. Just don't try to achieve that with one application. It should be done very lightly and layered. Each time I pick the brown up, I take it out. And um, 
Okay, so now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and I'm gonna go back in and most animals have white on their bellies and, and on their faces. That's why I have a little bit more around the face there. But, and I kind of accent, I don't wash the brush. So when I pick up the white, I have a little bit of tan in the brush, the brown in the brush with it. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown, turn this over, and a little drop of white and get myself a tan color like that. And I'm gonna use that tan color to um, do his belly. The, the tips of his paws. With the claws, we're gonna go back and we're gonna put that golden color on the claws. This is a little wet yet, so I can't do that. So you see what I did there on his belly? And I'm gonna do that on the other side too. He's got more of a belly on this side to see. Okay, so there's a little bit of color over there. And then the tips of his claws, right? Right above the claws that he has there. I do a, just accent areas. You know, you could do whatever you want. I do it above his feet and his and his hands, if they're called hands. Okay, one, two, three, four. This one is a little wet, so it's not gonna look exactly the same as the other ones. Okay, so we did that. So now he's pretty good. I mean, if you want to play with him more, you can. We do need to go back and do the claws. But let's do the tree first because we have the brown in here. So what I'm going to do with the tree is I'm going to pick up a little... Well, we could do the golden color on the tree too. We'll pick up a little bit of the golden color. I need to get a little bit more of my cap here. Pick up a little bit of the brown, and it could be either one of the browns with a little bit of the golden color. And blend them together. If you use the lighter brown, uh, you can use the lighter, you could use either brown, it really doesn't matter. If it doesn't show, then put a little bit of the darker brown in your brush. Okay, so on the tree, I also have some green, but first I'm gonna try to do a little bit of an accent with a little, I made a little lighter brown by using the brown with the golden color. Don't know if you could see that, okay? And the grain goes up and down, so I'm going the opposite way of the grain. You can also pick up white, it could be the white, it could be the golden color, it could be the brown. It's whatever makes a nice color to be uh, contrasting on here. I put a little bit of white in my brush this time too and you could see it a little bit better. Okay, can you see that? All right, and get all of your tree. Accented. I got it accented. Okay. Now, I also picked up a little bit of green and put it in there, but I want to make sure before I put the green in this brush that I have all the colors done that I want to get done. Okay. Um, because I don't want to wash my brush in between colors. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this green, this dark green that you have, and just highlight the tree and the bottom. The bottom is grass. So the bottom, I have some of the gold in there. Well, I, you might not even need the gold in there because you have the brown. So let's just do the green on the bottom. Okay, can you see that? So I don't wash my brush again. I just pick up the green in my brush. And while there's still a little bit of the beige in the brush, I kind of highlight the tree. Just a little bit. I don't want a lot. I just want a contrast. You just play, you have to learn how to play when you dry brush. And if you don't like it, you can go back and you could put your dark brown on it again and let it dry and then go back and dry brush it again. Dry brushing is the opposite way of the crevices. So your crevices on here are going up and down and you're gonna go the opposite way. And I don't know if you could see that, but could you see that little bit of green that I have on there? Okay, all right, so now I wanna do the green on the bottom. Now on the bottom, the grass is going up and down, so I'm gonna go the opposite way. Then I have some white spots showing, and if I was you, I would always go back and touch up those white spots. Because when you're finished with the whole piece, those are the areas that are gonna show. If you 
have white spots, you have all these colors, these beautiful colors, and then you have a couple of little white spots. Those, they will show, and you should get them all covered with some color, something in there. We have a, quite an obvious white spot right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I would go back and I would pick up a little bit of my brown and put it in there, just touch it up. I have a little bit there too. Okay, all right, now you also can do the darker brown or the lighter brown on the nose and the eyes. I, and the eyes, you can use the golden color on the eyes. All right, you can use the golden color on the eyes and the pupil, you could do the very dark brown. That's what I believe I would do. I would take the, um, yeah, let's take the golden color that's this color here, the more orangey looking color. And paint in your eyes solidly with your small brush, like so. See that? Just paint in that whole area. This way that'll dry before we go to put the pupil on top of it. I think it's the pupil. Okay, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna do a brown nose. I'll use my small brush to do a brown nose. Now I'm using the darker brown. I think on the other one I used the lighter brown. Doesn't matter. Okay, he's got a little nose. All right. Now, um, with the dark brown, you can put a line in his mouth. Now, if you have a marker at the end when it's completely dry, a black marker, you can do the eyes with a black marker and the line in the mouth. Okay, but I'm going to be doing it with this, with the dark brown. Just want to show you that there's so many different ways of doing it. And you have a nice pointy brush there. Okay, you could do that line in his mouth. All right, see the little line I put in his mouth? Now I'm going to go back with that dark brown and I'm going to make a circle touching the lid. Doesn't have to go all the way down to the bottom. See how I'm starting it? I always touch the lid. I don't put the circle in the middle of the eye. Ours is in the middle of our eye, but when you do that to a ceramic eye, they look like they're scared to death. So I always touch, I start my eye by touching the lid with the color and then scooping down and making a, as round a circle as I can. It's hard for me to do it while I'm, do it this way, so I wouldn't have a round circle. Okay, there we go. All right, it's pretty simple. If you don't like the way it comes, let it dry, put the golden color back on again, and go back with your brown again. All right, so now I wanna do the uh, claws. And let me see if I have a little color here. So he has uh, one, two, three, four sets of claws. I'm gonna use my small brush, I don't like that brush. And you don't have to do them solidly. I would like try to leave a little bit of brown in between each claw. And they may need to be done twice, depending some of the colors are thinner than others. Don't glob it on and don't put too much on and it doesn't dry. Put on one coat. Can you see what I did right there? Okay, one coat and then do all four of them and then come back and do a second coat. A lot of people want to achieve the final effect with one coat, and sometimes that doesn't work, and then you have a tendency to put the color on way too heavy. Thin, thin, thin coats dry fast, and you, you could do 10 coats if you want, but thin coats, and they should be drying as you're putting them on. Okay, see I'm leaving brown showing in between. I think that looks really cool. I need a little bit more of my golden color. I'm working out of my cap, so it runs out pretty fast. Okay. Oh, I just put my finger in his eye. That's what you have to watch. Try not to get it on your hands and then get it all over the piece. What I do, I did those two, so I have to do this one here.
And because you have the brown base coated on the entire piece, on the, the whole sloth, you can leave some of the brown showing. You don't have to butt your colors right up against each other. I think it looks better when they're like this instead of all the way across. That's the advantage of base coating first. It's almost like an antiquing. Okay, I should have one more to do, this one up here. And I'm gonna show you something too with the eye. You should always go back and put a little highlight in the eye, it just livens them up. Any eyes that you do on any ceramics. We have in our eyes, if you look at someone that's near you right now, if you look at their eyes, they have a highlight in their eyes, and the highlight is from light, from natural light hitting your eye. And that's what we try to duplicate on a ceramic piece, and it just seems to give it life. So now I could do this highlight with the white, usually I do it. So just take your brush, you could even take the back end of the brush and use the handle, and just put a little highlight, like so, a little dot, a little comma. See the little highlight I just put on his eye? Doesn't that brighten him up? tremendously and make such a difference. And then I would go back and I would do a second coat on your claws. I'm gonna start where I started before and go back. It makes such a difference. Like I said, some colors are thinner than others and you need to do two coats. The browns that I worked with, one coat seemed to be okay. But this golden color, and especially it's on top of such a dark color, the brown, uh, trying not to touch him. This is the one that I just did the second coat on. This is only a first coat. These are only first coats. So it does make a difference when you do a second coat, okay? And go around and make sure I get all this. I think that when, um, I finished the claws. I believe that that's all there really is to do. And don't be in a rush. Take your time when you're painting. I always say go back and tweak it, meaning go back and look at it and make sure that you have it all neat and nice the way you want it. You could even leave it and go back the next day. I always find the next day when I go back to something, it's a little bit less stressful than when I'm working on it all at the same time. And I go back the next day and I look at it and say, oh, I need to touch this up, I need to touch that up. So that's always your best. Thing to do not to don't stress over it I know I do a lot of classes and I work for hours on pieces and it, it gets tiring I mean this isn't that kind of a piece but if you get tired just put it aside don't make a mess and come back to it that's always your best bet so they're pretty similar he's a little bit lighter he's a little bit darker no right or wrong you do whatever you want on the piece now as far as sealing it you don't have to seal it the paints are all self sealing um, a lot of people like to seal it. You can buy a Krylon spray. You can buy, I think Walmart has a spray. DecoArt, they may have sprays. There's also, if you don't want to spray, because spray can be toxic and only spray outside, um, I would use a paint-on sealer. And Amazon sells them. They sell Duncan paint-on sealer. Some people use Mod Podge. I've never used Mod Podge. So there's a lot of choices out there. But it's a good idea if you want to have some kind of a sheen on it. It does give it a finishing Look, you, there, there are matte sealers, there are gloss sealers, okay? And then you could put your stopper back in and you could fill it up with a lot of money. And they're cute little banks, all right? So I wanna thank all of you for taking this class today, for picking up these kits at the library and for enjoying ceramics, which has been my passion. So uh, stay safe, have fun, have great upcoming holidays, and thank you all so much for taking the class.